And Lindsay joins us now live from Misrata. Lindsay, what's the latest there? Krishnan, I can scarcely hear a word you're saying. I am at a very noisy party in the central square in Misrata. There's music blasting out, there have been fireworks, sirens. I'd say all of Misrata is here, all the families and children, all dressed up in the uh, national colours, the new national colours, black, red and green. One young man has just been coming up to me and showed me a mobile phone image of Gaddafi's body. He had been one of the many hundreds who passed by this meat refrigerator in a local market where they're storing the body. Now that might seem very grisly, but to these people it's somehow important to know he's really dead. It's somehow really important to see the body. I was talking to um, a woman today who I know, Huda Abu Zaid. Her father was murdered by a Gaddafi death squad in London. She was a little girl when that happened and she found his body. She saw Gaddafi's body yesterday and she said, you know, I realized I hadn't seen a body like that since I saw my father. I said it was very strange because he looked so small. And I realized, she said, that he was just a man. And I think that that is something which Libyans are trying to come to terms with. He was just a man, and yet he dominated. He ruled their lives for 42 years. And there's a strange way in the sense that they don't know where to look now because for 42 years, this country has defined itself by Gaddafi. And people have defined their, themselves by either their ability to survive Gaddafi or their opposition to Gaddafi. Now they have to start all over again building a new Libya. In Misrata, it's starting here tonight with this huge party in the central square. Back to you, Krishna.